Great, yeah, thank you. Uh, I wrote something slightly different, I guess. It's uh, the same talk, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I want to start by recording the classical uh, some product phenomenon of recursion summary, yeah. <clears throat> Which dates back to 83. So, um, so one explicit way to say that addition multiplication in real numbers don't really interact. So there exists some absolute number C as a positive real number, such that uh, for every finite, well, for every A, let's say a subset of uh, a set of reals of n real numbers. Uh, the maximum of the uh, cardinality of the sum set, so a plus a and the product set a times a, uh, has size significantly bigger than the cardinality of a, in the sense that the size is at least uh, omega uh, to the power of one plus c. Okay, so that this holds for all uh, uh, for all sets of size n for some absolute constant. Uh, it's conjectured that this constant should be uh, two minus epsilon for any epsilon. <coughs> uh, so, sorry, I'll write the power should be two minus epsilon. <laughs> uh, so I conjectured that this is uh, two minus epsilon for any epsilon greater than zero. And uh, there are many results improving the bounds. So I think the optimal bound, if I'm not uh, outdated on this, is. Um, uh, something of the form uh, a to the power of four thirds plus uh, plus some very small epsilon, or some epsilon greatly greater than zero. Okay. Um, okay, so now now that we know that addition multiplication don't uh, don't interact too much, uh, one can try also to look at uh, to pick, take a polynomial into variables, and so this is going to be a result of uh, Elkers and Ramey. Say we take a bivariate polynomial with real coefficients. So let's say it's y. Okay. Um, so given a polynomial like this, we hope to find uh, uh, some positive constant again. So this is some c a positive real number such that for any sets a b. Of size n, any two sets of size n. If I look at uh, the result of applying my polynomial to any pair of the numbers from a and b, okay, then this is going to be uh, again expanding. So this is going to be uh, omega of n to the power of one plus uh, one plus c. Okay. So this will be the ideal scenario. Right, because the idea that for a typical polynomial, uh, it involves both addition and multiplication. So somehow there should be translation of this. But uh, of course we have to exclude the cases when addition and multiplication don't really interact. So the content of this um, theorem is that we can say explicitly the exceptional cases. So unless f of x is a multiplicative polynomial, so unless f is of the uh, of xy, so the form, let's say g of h of x, plus let's say i of y or when it is multiplicative so the same but with uh, multiplication so g of h of x times i of y for some univariate polynomials so for some g h i all polynomials in a single variable So, um, yeah, so as long as there's any interaction at all between addition multiplication and our polynomial, we're going to have this expansion. So, and this is the result for, uh, for two variables. Okay. And uh, finally, the conceptual generalization of this uh, came from a result of Elikas and Sabo. So, somehow kind of explains the structure. So, why we have plus or times here, where do they arise from? So this is Elikir Sabo from 2012. 
Okay, and there are many many variants of the theorem. So let me state uh, let me state the easiest version. So for any algebraic surface. Of one and two, three. Uh, such that the projection onto any two coordinates is finite to one. Uh, one of the two things must, must happen. So the first case is uh, power saving. So there exists some gamma, uh, positive real number, that's the R satisfies Gamma power saving. So what do I mean by this? By this I mean that if I take any grid uh, of size n by n by n, so for any ai all size n, and I look at the intersection of uh, my surface with this grid. So I look at r intersected with a1 times a2 times a3. So what would be the maximum possible size of the intersection? Well, so if we fix two coordinates, because of the assumption, there are only finitely many choices for the remaining coordinates. So it would be n squared most, right? And so the power saving means that it's completely less than n squared. So this is of the form some constant depending on r, n to the power uh, two minus gamma. So the level of the power is strictly less than the maximum possible number. So it's bounded away from the quadratic growth. Or if that if we don't have this uh, power saving, then the relation has to be very tightly connected uh, to to addition to the graph of addition. So or in the second case, or at least locally, so there exists some UI open subsets, uh, and we have some neighborhood of zero, so also open, <coughs> and for each coordinate we have some uh, some map. From U i to B, um, an analytic bit bijection, let's say. Such that uh, for any uh, uh, tuple that comes from the UIs, so for any x1, x2, x3 in uh, 1 times 2 times 3, 3, we have that uh, it belongs to R. So uh, x1 is on our surface, even only if uh, the sum by one of x1 plus by two of x2 plus by three of x3 is zero. So we can find some open neighborhood so that locally it's exactly in the correspondence up to relabeling of which coordinate. So coordinate by coordinate wise, it's uh, really uh, of this form. And I will often say that by this, I mean like a graph. Uh, so this, let's say, is a ternary graph of addition. Because I will talk about hierarchies in a second. Okay, so, so either we have power saving, or uh, if uh, the intersections of with some finite grids, some growing family of finite grids is as, as large as possible, then it has to be in a tight correspondence with, uh, with addition, like this. So of course, uh, uh, the converse is also true, right? So if, if it is of this form, um, you can play with the arithmetic progression in this abelian group and find uh, indeed n square uh, intersections. Okay. And also this is generalization of the Elkitraniai case because we can uh, look at the graph of, uh, of our polynomial, right? So I can look at like f of x, y is equal to z. Uh, and then I can apply this. Okay, you tweak it a little bit, but this is indeed a generalization of, uh, of the previous result. But it can be in the 
so uh, yeah, there are, there are many variants here. Let me just say, I uh, know uh, here, so here I mean uh, in the sense of uh, real topology. This, there's also algebraic counterpart of this with respect to the Zariski topology, but uh, today I want to present this one because of some translation. Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, so. Um, Gamma, you can bound in terms of. Ah, uh, gamma, uh, yes, gamma, they're, they're also explicit bounds on gamma. Uh, I will say some, some of them later. Okay, but yeah, gamma you can express in terms of um, uh, the degree of the polynomial defining this. Uh, yeah. No, no, gamma should be the degree of the polynomial. Wait a second. Gamma, gamma, let me see. Ah, sorry, gamma depends just on this here. On the, uh, so, yeah. Gamma, gamma, gamma is absolute. Okay. Yeah. So, what is gamma? Four thirds. <laughs> 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 I mean, the power. The power. No, the power, it used to be 11 over 6, and recently it was improved to 12 over 7. Okay, so the whole thing, yeah? I mentioned 11 over right. 6. Yeah, so this is. <laughs> I'll, I'll say some numbers in a second. I just want to, yeah. Let me not. For yourself, this doesn't matter. The, the constant. Ah, depends the, on yeah. the, the, the constant depends on the relation, but not the power. But it doesn't, doesn't depend on the relation. But the, well, it depends on, okay, okay, it depends on the complexity of. Um, no, but she says it's always 12 over 7. So. No, no, the, the constant. The constant. The constant. The big, uh, ah, this, okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. And the second one, what's the role of V? The role of uh, V. Let me see. Ah, so V is a neighborhood. Uh, well, uh, the maps. So all my maps go into this neighborhood. Yeah. So I have projections with this neighborhood of uh, of the identity. Okay. So now I to over. Okay. So this was the result uh, of Felix Sapo from 2012. And in the next 10 years, there was a lot of activity because it's natural. One wants to generalize it now. But what higher dimensions, higher arity, many, many, many things one uh, can be interested in now. Uh, so let me briefly recall some of the uh, some of the results in this direction. So we're interested in the situation when you have R. Uh, now my R is going to be some subset of X1, let's say times XR. So R will always be the arity. Um, so that each, uh, so let's say all algebraic, And uh, I will assume that the dimension of each coordinate is now allowed to be some n. Uh, so I, I can take semi algebraic. In fact, it will be more general in a second. Sorry. Uh, so we have this. Okay. Now, um, okay. So what? Okay. So what were the what were the developments? So the original theorem of Felix Sabo is more general than I stated. Actually, what they proved is that uh, they prove the case r equal to three, m any. Okay. Um, so uh, the situation when we go to higher dimensions, uh, we cannot count. In, uh, we, we, we do not necessarily count in intersections with the arbitrary grids anymore. We have to count intersections with uh, grids in so-called general position, which I will define. The grids. General position. So by the way, I'm yeah. curious. If you took your grid to be the integers in a box, mm -hmm. uh, you would get upper bounds for the number of integer points on a hypersurface or semi-algebraic. Yeah. yeah. And have you ever looked to see how they compare with the more standard methods of bounding this? So uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think you're going to get anything better. You get a non-trivial saving. What you'll get mm -hmm. very, if you in, the, in the non-trivial case. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's the totally direction. Sounds very poor that we know. By the way, I mean they go back to Pila Bombieri and then. Of course, yeah. Yeah. So there is some vague connection to Pila Wilkie, but it's not exactly the same. Uh, the same type of result. Pila Bombieri. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk about the minimal in a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're right. Okay, so uh, all right, so uh, so this was the original result. Uh, then there were several improvements and generalizations. So uh, let me mention some. So Arit had uh, several uh, improvements. Uh, so for example, Rashari Videos in 19 
they generalize it to the case r equals four, m equals one, and they also improve the uh, the bounds, uh, the, um, which uh, I won't I won't state precisely. Now, next there was a case of uh, of arbitrary arity. So this is Ras Shemtov, eighteen. Uh, m is equal to one, and R is of the form f of x1 through xr minus one is equal to xr, let's say, for any r. Okay, so it's a generalization of the uh, to polynomials of any in any number of variables. Okay. Now, uh, there was some work also over finite fields where the situation is a bit different, but there are analogous results over finite fields. Uh, there's some work by Buch Zimmerman. From 2012 and by Perry, also I think the same year. So this is this is a concern for the expansion for bivariate polynomials. So here, so here the results and methods are a bit different, but um, I won't go too much into it. Now, how does a model theory enter into this picture at all? So uh, in uh, 2013, Khrushchevsky gave uh, an explanation of this result, which is very evocative to model theorists, uh, of the original result of uh, Elikas and Sabo. So uh, somehow he recognized uh, importance of modularity of, uh, of a certain uh, matroid associated to, uh, which, which, which arises from this point counting problem. Okay, so what is this? Namely the matroid, which is obtained by the algebraic closure intersected <laughs> with an ultra product of finite grades. Okay. So I know that some of these words are. Uh, so this is in the finite field context. Uh, no, no. So this is actually for the original case. So for for C, um, finite uh, finite grids. Okay. Um, Can you so, say what all these terms mean? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so the idea is assume we're trying to um, to estimate this type of uh, to to estimate the size of uh, intersections with grids like this, right? So what we could do. We could take a sequence of grids growing in size, and somehow we want to look at the limit of this, which can be obtained by taking ultra product of these finite sets, which we view as still embedded into some larger algebraically closed field, like a non-standard extension, elementary extension of the complex numbers. And uh, now we just uh, look at the operation, the closure operator, <laughs> algebraic closure in this field, but we restrict it to this set, to this infinite set, which is an ultra product of finite sets. And turns out, because of something, which I will say in a second, uh, that this matroid, I mean, in principle, it comes from the algebraic closure in a field, right? So it should be nothing like span in a vector space. But uh, because of uh, some incidence bounds, uh, it, it turns out that um, this is actually a modular matroid. So it behaves more like span in vector spaces rather than the rank function is modular. It's not so yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So, so you get some modular matroid, and then for such, you can do some geometrization, projective geometrization. <laughs> Right. Sorry, and you're going too fast. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to say more, it's just a remark. So it's just historic slide. Yeah. But it's an important remark. Well, yeah, I will, I, I will say more about this remark. <laughs> I, I want to actually say a few things about the proof. For now, it's just history. <laughs> but um, okay, I can I can, I can, can elaborate. Can you just say what modularity means? Yes, so. Um, is it a matrix? I'm going to ask you a question. So it's, <laughs> but it's the same. So, so for, for Matroids, you have uh, a lattice of closed sets, lattice of algebraically closed sets. And then uh, modularity of this here, it's... Uh, what does it mean? So, well, there are several ways to say, but the easiest way to say is that if I have a point, which is on the closure of, um, of some set, right? So let's say it belongs to the closure of some set B, right? Then, um, in fact, it already has to belong to the closure of, uh, of, a, single, uh, of a single point. Um, yeah, so then B belongs to the closure of some... For B and B. So 
where is it called capillarity? Uh, oh, it corresponds to modularity of the lattice yeah. of uh, closed sets uh, in the modularity. That's exactly yeah. the thickness theorem. Okay. And yeah, yeah. And then you have the work of characterization theorem. How does it help you here? Right. So now, once you get this, um, once assume we're in this situation, then uh, you can use some um, some projectivization results. So you can actually um, cardinalize this. Uh, basically, it turns out you have something like a projective geometry, and from this you can recognize the group. I will, I will say a little bit about this, okay? Uh, I mean, I'm actually going to say more, I just want to mention it. But is it okay? <laughs> yeah. So, so this is, so you think about this as being sort of diametrically opposite to the sort of span of, is that what you said earlier, to the, the vector space? Yeah. Matrix. This is like nothing like that. No, no, it is. So, so it, is, it, it looks like, uh, like span in a, in a vector space. So I, I still don't quite understand. I, I still don't quite understand the variation. So you basically, you say in in this alternative, either you have your modular, and then you are right. So, so in the alternative, if if uh, my intersections don't grow uh, gr uh, grow maximally, okay, then I must be modular. Then I must be modular. Yeah. Okay. And from so this, you can find point. the group in the end. Yeah. And what does this gamma? Does he obtain a gamma? No. So the, that's an important point. Uh, gamma that you get out of this, uh, you can't control. So no control on gamma, not ex no explicit gamma. Okay, so you don't get uh, an explicit gamma here. If I have a vector space and I have a basis, mm -hmm. some sub subspace, yeah. then the statement that if A is in the span of those vectors, then it must be in the span of one of those vectors. It's false. Sorry, this is not. If I, if I wrote that, that's not what it should be. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Right. Um, no, 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 but I mean, that, that's kind of the point, right? That's kind yeah. of the, the idea of the embedding. It's not, it's not okay, you're not, you're not part of the, you're not in the span of one of the basis elements, but you're right. basically saying that there is an extension of this. This is just in the, in the all of our vector spaces, it's just saying, okay, there, there is a linear combination that's actually that you are. Yeah, so your element is a linear combination, right? Yeah. You're basically, you're, you're looking at the matroid of, that is generated by the individual elements. You want to you want to say that this comes actually from as as a small as a as a lattice of sub of all the subspaces in some vector space. That's kind of the embedding theorem that's kind of lurking behind here. Oh, can you pause the line on the board then? Say what you're supposed to say. Right. Uh, let me see. So, what is the matroid that? Is right. Associated to right. So the matroid is um, I have uh, my I have my final grids right. Pi, let's say. Then I took the ultra product. This is going to be a. Uh, now I look at the matroid in which the closure operator responds to the algebraic closure in the uh, ultra product of the fields. So I think about this one as sitting in the copy, let's say of C O R. But then when I take the ultra product, this sits inside some non-standard. Uh, extension of the complex numbers, and so I look at the intersection of the ACL uh, in the in here. So the right closure in C star intersected with uh, with the grid. So the relation R has no um, so no role yet. not no role yet. Yes, yes. yeah. But uh, but but then in the case when uh, in in the case when I have uh, uh, no no power saving for R. I can uh, I can con conclude modularity of the of this matroid locally at R. Yeah, I'm sorry, this is not what I was going to present at all at this point. Yeah, but uh, I hope I hope to say it. <laughs> okay, so so in, in some way this this this, this work of embedding theory this uh, this works over any characteristic. Does this work over any characteristic? No, this is characteristic zero. I mean, the precise result, I didn't tell you what the precise uh, projectization result is, but the point that we understand matroids, which can be embedded into algebraic closure over C. So this, uh, this is a Khrushchev theorem. Um, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, so, sorry, let me just finish the, <laughs> the history slide. <laughs> so, uh, then we had um, the next result is great we are. So this is finally elaborates on, on, on the method of Krushovsky to get um, uh, to get R and M arbitrary over C. Okay. 
match we get r and m arbitrary over c and uh, also the additional recognition that the resulting groups are abelian connection to abelian groups which we will see in a second and uh, finally uh, but but the important point is as i mentioned uh, no bounds on gamma no bounds on gamma so they use Koshowski. yeah they use they rely on this uh, on this te te technique and so finally the result that i want to present today is joined with Bobby Peters and Okay. Uh, uh, and so here we have any R and M. Moreover, the relation is now allowed to be not just uh, algebraic or semi-algebraic, but in fact definable in any minimal structure. Okay. And we get explicit bounds on gamma. Ah, it's basically bounds on gamma in terms of the complexity of this definable set. Ah, okay. So, yeah. but you depend on the. I mean, if if our uh, gamma constant. A priori depends on the degree in, in this case. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. even in the case r equals three and m equals one. Uh, you, yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, from from our method. Yeah. yeah. If, if with some work you can get rid of it, but uh, a priori does. Yes. So it's like a good structure in this case. Uh, yes, because we count grids in uh, in a, a general position. Uh, you'll explain what this group what it is. Right? Yeah, I'll, I'll say it. So let me state finally the theorem because I said a lot of vague things by now. Let me state uh, let me state one theorem. Uh, maybe let me start from the theorem. Okay. So here at the theorem. So assume R is greater or equal than three. We have a relation R. Okay. Um, definable. Uh, well, let, let me write single algebraic. But uh, the real context is actually definable. In a non-minimal expansion of R, so let me just mention the difference. Semi-algebraic means uh, you, you can cut, cut it out by polynomial equalities and inequalities. So here you allow to use more complicated things. You can you allow to use exponential polynomials, for example, or restricted analytic function type conditions, etc. Yeah. So uh, assume you have a relation like this. Um, Still, with the condition that projection onto any r minus one coordinates is finite one, and assume that the dimension of each uh, xi is m arbitrary. Okay. In this case, one of the following happens. One of the following, okay. Um, case one, we have power saving, but restricting to grids in a so called general position. So um, there exists some uh, uh, semi algebraic family F, families one, Fi subset of Xi, such that for any uh, and there exists some number L such that for any AI subsets of XI, if uh, AI intersected with any set F from F is smaller than L, as long as the dimension is strictly less, so for any uh, F in F with the dimension of uh, f is strictly less than uh, the dimension of x than m okay then we have power saving so then the cardinality of r intersected 
with uh, the product K1 times AR is going to be bounded um, by, um, by uh, N to the power uh, R minus one minus gamma, where gamma, uh, I'll tell you what the gamma is. So, so for gamma equal to one over eight M minus five, this S is greater equal than four, gamma equal to one over 16 M minus 10, if S is equal to three. So the maximum possible size of the intersection would be n to the power r minus one. So we get a trade-off, right? But we are only looking at grids from which uh, whatever we try to cut out by sets from this given family of uh, uh, of smaller dimension, they can only cut out a bounded number of points from such a grid. This is L. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, oh my God. Uh, no, this is R, excuse me. R. Yeah. So, uh, Dimension ah, because the size so the size of the intersection is bounded by L. Right. I ah, mean uh, how it enters so it enters um, exists F. Let me see exists a phi, exists L. So they depend on the. So gamma does not depend on. Oops. <laughs> oh, did I say okay? I, I don't know by now. <laughs> so and an R. That, gamma only depends on M here. Yes, but uh, but the choice of our families. And uh, and the constants depend on the on, on R specifically. Yeah. On what well, they really depend on description complexity. Ah, okay. That's right. So exists in L or for all families phi, and uh, well, uh, for all L large enough. So somehow I should say for all L greater or equal than L zero. For some, for some L zero, which only depends on the. Uh, on the but then something must happen. Then, the yeah, something needs to happen. Otherwise, any any stuff. Let me see. Uh, no, no, not every. So if 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 I look, look so what what is the point of this general position? So let's say I fix my family f, right? Uh, and let's say I, I, my set is just a subset of a uh, of r, so power one, right? So then, given a family like this, uh, my set is going to be in FL general position, so any A is going to be in FL general position for uh, L large enough with respect to F. Yeah. Right. Uh, with respect to uh, with respect to F. Yes. Yeah. But uh, but when I go higher, yeah, then I have to uh, then I have to actually then this actually imposes a restriction. So for subsets so far, when the case when the dimension is one for all of them, uh, everything is automatically in general position for uh, for L large enough. Right. Um, but Sammy says the, the conclusion has to involve L right now because otherwise you can just say L to and uh, uh, wait. Let me see. So 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 this algebraic uh, families and L. Zero, large enough, so that after that, uh, if I cut out like this, and this depends on R L constant, the constant depends on R L. Yeah. That was sorry. Yes. Yes. Okay. So so this is the power saving case, right? When we get to fewer intersections than one expects in general, and uh, the second case is that we are connected to to a group. So uh, there exists. Open sets Uy subset of Xi and uh, an abelian group, a real group, uh, let's say G plus, of dimension corresponding to the dimension of the coordinates, so dimension n, okay, uh, and maps by i from uh, from uh, UI to V, where V is a neighborhood of the identity in G. Such that uh, we have uh, the same situation as before, yeah? So such that R of um, X1, X uh, R holds, if and only if uh, the sum of the 
Why I or for sign? Is it focus your own? <laughs> well, uh, sure, I could say that. Yeah. I mean, it depends. It depends how much you want to control the maps. So, um, but let's. Uh, I think he's saying because it's a billion. Yeah. No, I, okay, I, I understand. Yeah. So, well, local, locally, I mean, you can. Assume, sorry. Locally, okay. you Sorry. Locally, you Yeah. 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 So, right. So we can. Okay, we can say alright. All right. Very small question. Uh, mm -hmm. When you say finite one, you mean bounded to one? Uh, yes, yes. So this actual bound. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the statement um, of the result. Uh, now, Terry, Terry made a remark earlier, I guess, why uh, why do we also expect to get a billion? So, some kind of the ultimate theorem, we would expect to get a uh, response with nil potent groups in some form. Uh, there's some partial results in this direction. Uh, so, basically, the idea would be if we relax the meaning of uh, grid in a general position, we would hope to recognize nil potent groups this way. But this is still in uh, still in progress. Yeah, there. there are some partial results which indicate what it could be, but. Okay, so but uh, and from homonomality or, or semi do you need what, what why is that the right? Uh, I mean, do you need sort of Tarski Seidenberg kind of things or right? right yes. what do you yeah, need? so I can actually say there are two ingre main ingredients that you need on this proof. Uh, And so, right, and so if I'm working definable no minimal expansion, I have to be slightly more careful in the conclusion also, right? I will have to say that we can find some uh, definable group in, in, in the correspondent structure. So, uh, right, so main ingredients, two things. Uh, group, the group, uh, the higher array here. That's why you Sorry? Okay, so I mean, every bit in the group is, is locally array, but the uh, identification could be transcendental. Is, is that a problem? Um, um, like not definable, whatever. Yeah, the, 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 the point is, I mean, we, we can always find um, uh, a group in elementary extension, a define, type definable group, but it's only type definable. Typically. So they can transfer lo down locally in general minimal without some additional assumptions, is somehow the local, uh, the local group structure. And then if, uh, if we knew this was, for example, semi algebraic or something. We could use, I guess, uh, local clipper five or something to, to, to embed it into a real group. But in principle, without some assuming some saturation, so without working on standard extension, we can only get uh, uh, we can only get the local group. Okay, so the hierarchy group configuration, uh, well, the generalization of uh, celebrated group configuration theorem of Kruszewski. So this is one, uh, two, uh, an incident bound. In uh, minimal structures, okay. Um, well, and I guess. So, um, yeah, just, just, I'm just trying to understand this condition again. So, mm -hmm. general, so in general, you would expect something that wouldn't have this condition and this uh, FL family. So you wouldn't have and 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 like a different like what. In general, you mean what is this? What is how should I understand this condition of uh, of uh, um... ah, well, the idea we, we want basically to look at grids which are sufficiently generic. So we want to say that we choose enough enough uh, varieties so that your family only has bounded size intersections so with what them. What you want to get rid of in your ideal theorem? Ah, uh, well, it's hard. To, it's hard to count. Yeah, it's hard to count intersections which sit on on, on smaller dimensional varieties. Somehow. So 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 basically, we want to just. Uh, only see the generic part of this. No, no progressions would be. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, the main problem would be exactly like if you look at take a Heisenberg, Heisenberg group or something. Uh, you can you can have uh, you can have high count, but not necessarily in, in general position. So you can have maximum intersections like this, but but you won't find it in general position because that would force a by the theorem. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I understand. I'm just trying to understand what is the theorem you would hope to get. Like, ah, uh, more in general, like what would there, be like cotton? There's no expect in the more. Um, no. 
like without yeah yeah there's no I, I, so there, it's, there's no precise statement i think it will be a bit more complicated you will have something like a maybe like a family of groups with some parameterized family of groups or something okay. like i don't i don't think one should expect the same uh, equally clean statement for for the correspondence with an important group we can we can talk after i mean there are some more precise stuff. Okay, so right, so these are the two main theorems, and also I guess let me mention structure of definable groups in a uh, minimal, uh, so well, the theory of definable groups in the minimal structures. Okay, so what is a group configuration? So there are many ver versions of it by now. Uh, I want to state actually a really explicit combinatorial uh, baby case of it, so uh, which which doesn't involve any model theory. So uh, uh, assume G is an abelian group for a second, okay, and assume I have a relation uh, R of x1 through xr, even by saying that uh, the sum of the xi's is zero in my group, okay. This relation satisfies two obvious properties. Uh, let's say property P1, which says that uh, for any x1 through xr minus 1, there exists a unique uh, xr such that r holds. And the other obvious property uh, is that uh, now I can fix two, uh, two coordinates at a time. So for any x1, x2, for all uh, y bar, y bar prime, if I have that r holds on x bar, y bar, and it holds on x uh, bar, y bar prime. So if they agree uh, on some tuple x bar, consisting of x1, x2, so y bar represents the remaining coordinates. Okay, so x is the first two, and this is the remaining. So if they agree on some two, then they actually agree uh, on uh, on everything. So for any x bar prime, we have r of x bar prime y bar, if and only if r of x bar y bar. Okay. So it's obvious that this holds for uh, for the relation in an actual abelian group. These two, and I want these two conditions for any permutation of the variables. So we have these two properties for any permutation. Of uh, x1 through xr. So it turns out that these two conditions are enough to reconstruct the group as well from an arbitrary relation which satisfies that. So the proposition is that uh, the converse also holds. So given any uh, r relation on x1 to xr, okay, satisfying p1 and p2. Uh, we can find g, an abelian group, And by injections, phi i, so that up to uh, up to applying them, this is exactly the graph of uh, addition in J. Okay, such that uh, R of x one through x r holds is only if uh, the sum of the phi i of the size. Uh, And moreover, if the original relation was uh, definable or semi algebraic, let's say, then uh, the group is also uh, semi algebraic. Working, uh, I have to be slightly careful if I work in an abstract or minimal structure, so let's say it's definable in some minimal structure. The resulting group is only going to be type defined. It's going to be given by a possibly infinite intersection of, uh, of, of definable conditions. 
but for similar algebraic this doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. So we can get this. Um, now, uh, okay, so what, what, so what is it saying? In some sense, it's saying, it's actually telling you which uh, latent hypercubes come from uh, addition in abelian group, right? So this is very explicit characterization. You just need these two properties. Um, right, so this is the baby case. It can be done by hand, essentially, if you play with this a bit. So uh, idea, we have to, um, we're going to build a group from the composition of uh, functions in this family. So let's say if I'm given a relation of RT just four, let's say. No, 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 now I have an abstract relation just satisfying P1 and P2. Yeah, I don't know, any, there's no group in the pictures. But, but it's kind of converse to the It's a converse to the observation, yes. Right, so idea, if I, uh, let's say for four, I can define, I can consider family of bijections. So let this be the, uh, um, the set of all S from X1, uh, well, I will have all relations of the form X1, X2, A, B, well, let's say A3, A4, so that A3 is an uh, X3, A4 is an X4. So I have a two parametric family of projections between x1 and x2. So a family of projections. So this family uh, of projections, I can now build a group from it. So then if I fix any f0, Let's say in F. Then for uh, let's say F prime in F, we can define the sum to be uh, F composed with F zero inverse composed with uh, with F prime. Okay. And so we can using the P one P two, you can show that with respect to this operation, uh, F is an abelian group. And then we have to then you work a bit more to, to, to establish correspondence with the with the remaining coordinates. So somehow you have some extra coordinates wiggling around. So given any, I fix one function in this family f zero, okay. right? And then give, then I define the operation on on, on, on the functions in f. So this is comp of compositions. Uh, yeah, this is this is this is composition. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's too many circles there. Yeah. Okay. I realize I could pause P2. Uh, what does it say? Right, so, so how we switch from X1 and X2 to X bar. Okay. Right, so I'm saying, assume, th think about, so. Uh, X, bar, X, bar, X, bar, X, bar, X bar is X1 from X2. Okay, so uh, did, I, did I mix something? Yeah, X1, X2, and Y is the rest of the uh, X bar, this is X bar, and this is the remaining coordinates. So Y so represents X3 through XR. Okay, and in the case uh, R is 3, I should think about. Why is being singleton? Ah, it's very important. I'm very sorry. So yeah, I, I want to assume that R is greater equal than four. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, yeah. Thank you. Um, For three, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, right. Okay. So we have this. Now the real version of the group configuration is somehow uh, we don't really have uh, bijections. We only have uh, finite to finite correspondences. And we have to work generically. So somehow you work on infinitesimal neighborhoods. You don't really have real functions. But, and uh, things become more complicated, but at the core, somehow this is the idea really. So you build a group from compositions of some, gene of, from generic compositions of correspondences. Sorry? Okay. Sorry? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Terry has very nice uh, exposition of some variant of this on, on his blog, yeah. Um, uh, so, Right, but the point here, so the, the classical Khrushchevsky theorem corresponds to R is equal to four. Yeah, so, so we needed a higher RIT version to, in order to, to parameterize the, the higher RIT. So this uh, is the Khrushchevsky argument, this construction? No, no, this, so, so it's not even obvious that this has anything to, to do with it, I guess, at the first look. Uh, so X, R equals four up to reformulation is a reformulation of the classical uh, Khrushchevsky group configuration theorem. And uh, but then, yeah, then, then you can do it for higher RIT. Right, okay. So this is the group, group configuration theorem. 
Uh, now, the second uh, ingredient that I want to mention is incident bounds. Incident bound, generalized incident bounds. Some quotation marks. Incidence bounds. So this is a, I guess, a generalization. I mean, there, this is a whole industry, of course, this is a big subject. Uh, so, but, but it turns out that it's possible, again, to generalize some of the incidence bounds from polynomials to, uh, to, to relations defined on the minimal structures. So the course somehow it's not just about polynomials, it's rather about nice, having some nice cell decompositions, at least qualitatively. I'm not saying quantitatively you get the same bounds, it's definitely not far from optimal. But uh, you get at least some uh, something which I want to say. So, uh, what this about? so assume I have some relation, uh, some uh, I subset of let's say u times v, where let's say u is a subset of Rn, and this is a subset of Rn for some m and n. So assume all of these are uh, definable in a minimal structure. Um, okay, so now uh, assume that I is uh, K to two three. Okay. So do I mean I mean that it omits uh, the complete graph on uh, bi complete bipartite graph on uh, two by two vertices. Okay. So now uh, K to two. Okay. Then there exists some data, and I'm going to state it uh, qualitatively. So there exists some delta bigger than zero, such that for any A subset of, uh, of U of size N, any B subset of uh, U of size N, uh, the number of edges uh, between A and B is going to be uh, bounded by N to the power of three half minus delta. For some delta greater than epsilon, depending on uh, depending on my relation. Okay. So the, the point here that in general bound, if I just had an arbitrary bipartite graph, uh, I would only be able to get uh, n to the power three half. So this is the, um, the general result you get by Cauchy Schwartz. Uh, so to get some non-trivial improvement, you need some additional geometric structure. Uh, well, pr probably many of you know, of course, the, the same detail. So, uh, turns out there's enough geometry, geometry uh, in uh, in the minimal context to get this type of improvements. And uh, in some, sometimes you can calculate this data explicitly. So, for example, for um, uh, i a subset of r squared times r squared, we know that you get the same bound as in symmetric trotter. So you get all of n to the power of thirds. So, due to uh, myself, Galvin, and Stachenko, and independently, uh, Bakhto and Ras. So, it's really proper as a special case, of course, of this. Uh, this relation is semi algebraic. Right? Uh, and uh, you still get some trivial improvement for higher arguments. Okay. I think mean, this is because of this. The partition. Yes, you have some kind of uh, nice partitioning available. So, in fact, it's actually funny because polynomial method doesn't really seem to work in the minimal structures uh, because you don't have, uh, you know, you don't have Bezu theorem already. I mean, if you intersect with, a, if you allow exponentiation around, here. but uh, but some the other techniques uh, are possible to generalize. So, I think we use two different methods actually here. You can either use uh, some partition, some part, cell partition techniques, so you can use um, um, I forgot what, what is it called? Uh, um, the crossing uh, the crossing number box. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, right, so you can yeah. It would be actually very interesting to understand if 
polynomial methods can be somehow salvaged for uh, for general minimal structures, at least somehow probabilistically, working probabilistically somehow. So, okay, so you have some trivial bounds, and then this delta, this non-trivial trade-off from the trivial bound, essentially corresponds to the power saving that you get in the in the result. This delta corresponds to uh, power saving. Okay. I'm not saying it's equal, I mean, but it can be expressed uh, in, in terms of it. Okay, so, uh, uh, right, so these are, these are some of two main ingredients that go into it. Uh, then, as I mentioned earlier, you need to know a little bit about uh, definable groups and the minimal structures, because a priori, if it's just defined by some, by some you know, by some, Relations in the language, uh, a priori is just a discrete group. But because of a minimality, you can equip it with a Lie group structure, and then uh, yeah, then then you can get this more uh, more explicit result. Um, what else should I mention? Ah, so, right. So yeah, so these are the two main ingredients. I think uh, I think I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Any questions? So um, it seems like you it seems like you might want a stronger statement that rather than insisting that your grids are in general position, that you still take any grids, then I can locate some sort of substructure which can be embedded in the building group. Like some more yeah, more pro even approximate structures. Um, or Potentially, yeah. So I see. So you're saying that you might have to prove that, but then you need a bigger class of objects than, than you get, or? Yeah. Well, just, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure I fully understand what, uh, what it's addressing. It's not but... a really understandable question. Uh, um, uh, so, it, yeah, I guess it's it. it would you dream of being able to prove something where you don't have to insist on this? Uh, Oh. Uh, on any kind of general position. Any kind of general yeah. position. And so what's the say? Yeah, this I I'm, I'm not sure I would even fully dream about that. I, I think I would like to relax general position a bit. Okay. And there are several possibilities for how to relax it, which uh, which one hopes maybe you, you will actually get correspondence with it. some impotent objects rather than just a billion. Right. But uh, all of this is uh, like very open somehow. There's no precise uh, result of this kind. Without without any assumption at all, I'm not sure if there's uh, if there's like anything meaning, meaningful. If all, if all of, I mean, if, yeah, the problem in cases when all of your points are already sitting on some substructure, then you can mm -hmm. just say something interesting about that substructure. Uh -huh. So you say like um, many of your points have to lie on some some substructure, and that substructure has some some limits. Mm -hmm. But then I guess that's yeah. hard. Yeah, I mean, even if I if I know already in, in advance, you know that, for example, my relation is the graph of addition in an algebraic group, still characterizing nilpotency in terms of counting grids with interest of this group that you're already given, right? You're not trying to locate the group. Uh, this is this is not so trivial somehow, but uh, but there are some partial results. Yeah. So the cell decomposition stuff, um, that's where your complexity comes. Yeah, yeah. And how do you what? What uh, is are you using fancy things like Yomdin, like those guys do, or were you just doing some special stuff? Actually, no. Yeah, we don't we, we, we don't use Yomdin. Uh, the main point, really, you need is uniformity. You need to have strong uniformities and families for uh, all sorts of uh, for these decompositions. You want to get sort of bounds that depend nicely on the complexity. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so for that, uh, you need to yeah. So you need. Uh, Instead of, of you not only just do cell decomposition, you need to do some random sampling on top of this to get. Uh, so, but this strategy is really similar, you know, to how you prove uh, some ready trotter, for example. You want to kind of divide and conquer into pieces and then count on each piece separately. But uh, here, the cell decomposition is more complicated. Like if, if, if you were just given a family of lines, let's say. So, but but the main point is really uh, un uniformity. So, it's uh, it's. Uh, Basic minimal kind of plus, plus some combinatorics on top. So if you impose stronger relations on R, can you something say something positive characteristic? Uh, uh, 
Uh, no, yeah. So, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, there is um, the real context. Maybe I should just mention. So, the real context in which you can prove the existence of some delta at all uh, is a bit more general. It's not just or minimal. It's actually something called distal structures. So, for this type of bound, you can establish also for QP, let's say, where again you have some traits of uh, geome geome geometric cell, nice geometric cell decompositions. Yeah. So, over the periodics or some expand, let's say some analytic expansion on the periodics, you can. This, this, this result applies to that as well. Yeah. Well, now then, when you get, want to calculate this explicitly, then then it gets, of course, harder and harder. Well, finite you, you don't get any. Ah, first, first of all, yeah. First of all, you don't get any improvement in finite fields for for general sets, and they are too very small, let's say, or. But you still might expect this to something like this to be true. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's. I mean, in fact. It's, Let's say if you study an expansion, yes, sometimes you can replace this incidence bound by some kind of uh, regularity, algebraic regularity, lemma or something like this. Then you make the characteristic large, or is it somehow? You, uh, you, you can fix the characteristic, but the field has to grow. Yeah. Okay. okay, so it's just the size of the field. Yeah. The, uh, Initially, we needed the characteristic large, but then uh, it's it's also the field large. Mm -hmm. For your incident, may I ask a question? Uh, yes. For, for your incidence result, uh, if you assume more generally that you don't have a complete bipartite graph with uh, D vertices on the left and D on the right, where D is not necessarily two, do you have a similar uh, power saving result uh, over the, the Zarankiewicz bound, and to the two minus one over D? Uh, yes, yes, it's, uh, it's more general. Yeah. For, for applications, I mean, we only need the case like key, uh, D two or something like this, but but but, but there are some uh, uh, there are some results here for 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 larger when both parameters are larger. Okay. No more questions. So let's thank Arthur again. <laughs>